We need to talk price strategy before we talk about pricing. When it comes to business, we don't talk about the surgery, we talk first about the symptoms. Before we can talk about anything in real estate, we need to talk about the things that go into pricing. We need to talk about market dynamics. We need to talk about absorption rate. We need to talk about the overall stats of our market, right? Are we in a buyer-based market? Are we in a seller-based market, right? If we don't have those, unfortunately, we're not giving the seller a complete picture, right? You need to do the research. You need to have the information. And when you do that, now you understand the market dynamics. So as you are going through your presentation and you're talking to your client, are you actually educating and informing them on the market dynamics? We need to talk price strategy before we talk about pricing. So there's three types of pricing. There's aspirational pricing, which is pricing high. There's perceived market value because market value only comes together when the buyer and the seller put together a contract and then you have event-based pricing. Now, if you don't understand your market dynamics as an agent, you're in tough water, right? You need to know how many people are showing up the other houses, right? The other houses on the market are the actual competition, right? So if one is not selling, that's what you should be focused on. You shouldn't be focused on a CMA because that's past history. You should be focused on what's on the market and what the activity is there. So as an agent, your job is to call the other agents and ask them, hey, how's your activity been? Hey, how many showings do you have? Okay, you've been on the market for 27 days. Any offers? What were the offers like? What were the conditions of the offer? Right? Were they contingent? Were they like this? Were they like that? What was the price on them? Why did your seller say no to them? What did you think the seller should have done? Right? You need to do the research you need to have the information. And when you do that, now you understand the market dynamics. So as you are going through your presentation and you're talking to your client, are you actually educating and informing them on the market dynamics? Because if you're not in a market that supports event-based pricing because properties are sitting on the market too long, then you need to say, hey, Mr. Mr. Seller, Based off of what's available currently, which is the active competition in the market, which is really what matters, because if Johnny's house across the street, which is a four bed, three bath, 2200 recently updated, similar to yours, is it selling? Then if we don't go under Johnny's price, we're going to be potentially sitting on the market. And based off of your overarching goal that you told me earlier that you needed to be in Nantucket by next month because of your new job, otherwise you'd be carrying two mortgages. I guess, where do you feel we should go pricing strategy wise? Well, you know, I don't know. We really don't want to leave any money on the table, but we also can't afford to be traveling back and forth with the family to, to take care of this property while we're managing the, the move on the new property. Right. Okay. And now you can start to look at the strategy as the driver to the pricing. If you need to do a price reduction later on, all we do is we go back. So, hey, I was just reviewing our notes here. I was just looking at my file and it looks like when we talked last month, you needed to be out of here by September. Well, we're coming up on the middle of July, which means we need 30 days to close, which means we really only have a two week window left to get the property under contract. And that's barring that nothing goes wrong. So I guess remind me, help me out, has something changed where you don't need to be out of the house by September anymore. Well, no, nothing's changed. Okay, so where do you feel we should go from here, right? We we tried to go at the higher of the range of the active listings. And as you can see, the three properties that we were comparing ourselves to are, are still on the market. This one's at this one, this one's at this one, and this one's at this one. Now you're gonna need to give an analogy here. So you need to be really good at giving analogies. Well, we still want to try to be at this price. We really want the money because, you know, this is our down payment. They're in logic-based thinking, right? So we have to fight logic with logic. Yeah, hey, I, uh, I, had a, I had a feeling you might say something like that. Do you mind if I give you a different perspective, right? Because I want to do what's right for you so that you get the top dollar. And the longer we sit on the market, the more opportunities people are going to come and undercut us. Because how, what would you think, like, if you were going to a Mercedes dealership or a Lexus dealership and you saw a car in the back 
that was covered in three inches of dust, and you saw a car up front, same car, similar features, but one was up front and one was in the back, which one would you feel perceive, right? The perception, which one would you feel as a perceived higher value? The one under three inches of dust or the one in the front? The one on the back lot or the one in the front lot? Well, the one on the front lot, how come? Well, because it's clean, it's up front. Maybe there's something special about it because why would they put a nice car in the back? Exactly. Well, the people that are watching the marketplace are studying the homes just like you, right? So they're looking at the days on market. They're looking at how many days on market your property's been. And as the more and more the days rack up, your beautiful car gets pushed into the back of the lot. The farther it goes to the back of the lot, the less people are willing to pay. The faster a car comes on the lot and sells, the higher it sells for. So based off of that, would it be okay if we looked at what's available now and you do a new market evaluation, right? Would it be okay if we just looked at the current market, what's available, what's sold, and what's got pending and I actually made a nice spreadsheet for us and I put all the data in there. But I also have the listings and the photos on my iPad if you wanted to see those as well. And they're gonna go, oh wow, that's amazing. Thank you so much. Yes, we'd love to look at the data. And we don't know, if, and, and you could say something like, and, and you don't have to change your price or your price strategy. It's just good to know what's out there so that we can make the right choices for you and your goals. Right? Do you see how everything's about them? You don't have to take a listing that you feel is overpriced. So if you take a listing's overpriced and it doesn't sell, that's on you, not on them. You could get up, close your book and say, Pedro, is super nice to meet you. However, based off of the strategy that you guys look to implement, I'm just not the right agent for you. And they're going to go, why not? Well, based off of your strategy, your property is going to sit on the market for six to 12 months. And really like, I don't believe it's the right strategy and I, and I actually feel like you're doing yourself a disservice and so you should probably find another agent. Now, I wouldn't say that personally probably, I'd probably take the overpriced listing, but I would have a better conversation so that we can have a timestamp. Okay, at 30 days, this is what we're gonna do. 42 days, this is what we're gonna do. 82 days, this is what we're gonna do. 27 days, this is what we're gonna do. Let's book those calls in now, right? And then you book the call in and in the calendar invite, you actually write down what the purpose of the call is. So they see it on their calendar like, oh yeah. And you put the reminders in them about why you're going to meet on day 27. And you do it on the day one. You don't do it on day 26 because now they forgot what you talked about. You remember very clearly because you're the one doing the work. They forget and then they blame you that you're not doing enough. So we have to set the process up correctly. And then when you talk about everything, hey guys, it looks like we, we, you know, we wanted to go at perceived market value, right? Knowing that it was going to be a little hard in this market, but we didn't get an offer. So what the market is actually telling us is that we're more at aspirational pricing. Oh, and then when you have the overarching goal, you always anchor on their reason why they're selling. Did something change? Well, no, nothing's changed. Okay, well, Based off of where we're at right now, I have three recommendations. And then you ask for permission. Is it okay if I share them with you? Recommendation one, any questions? Uh, what, 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 are, what are the specific questions you have around that? Option number two, right? Option number three, out of these three options, like just on these three options, if you were to choose one of them, you don't have to actually do it. Which one would you be kind of leaning towards? One, two, or three? Number two, wh why do you feel... I, I think number two is a great option, but why do you feel like number two is good for you? I see so many agents trying to rush through pricing, rush through contracts, rush through talking about money because they don't have the confidence. So they're trying to rush through these as fast as humanly possible. Instead of rushing, slow down, take a breath and realize that this could be upwards of 30 to 40 minutes of the conversation. You could be there for 60 to 90 minutes in 30 to 40 minutes, you're going to be talking about compensation and pricing. Because if you don't do it the right way on day one, it's going to be that much harder on day 90. Because emotions become very elevated as people's homes don't sell. And they're going to be looking at you 
and you're like, well, I've done the staging, I've done the marketing, I've done the photography. There's not much more that we can actually do because nobody's selling in this price point. And it's up to you to help them make great decisions. It's not up to them to make great decisions. And if a seller price is high, that is a direct reflection of your ability to have the conversation around pricing strategy and pricing. So if you like this content, like, share, subscribe. If you want to learn more about what we're doing at our live events and what we're doing in our courses and our group training, right? Our team training and how we're actually helping you implement the right systems to use in a post-COVID world. Just click the link below, book in some time, and I'll see you soon.